Thanks, Sean. So, Sean, do you want me just to start? Yep, go ahead. Okay. Well, welcome, everyone. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the Town of Olds All Candidates Forum, hosted by the Olds and District Chamber of Commerce in partnership with Mountain View Publishing, 96.5 CKFM, and Olds College. Tonight's forum is a virtual event and will provide our mayoral candidates and councillor candidates the opportunity to share a little about their vision for Olds and provide a perspective on some of the issues and opportunities that our community faces. It's an opportunity to share a little bit about their vision, vision for Olds and the perspective on the opportunities. It's an opportunity for the residents of Olds to also have some of your questions answered and provide you with an informed choice to make on election day, Monday, October 18th. The format of tonight's event is focused around questions. These are your questions, Olds, and, we, and were submitted by email to the chamber and via drop boxes at a &W, TEDS, and Mountain View Publishing. So I wanna thank those who did provide questions. There were many that covered similar themes and the organizing committee worked together to compile, compile and select the questions that are to be asked this evening. In the case of our mayoral candidates, we are devoting about a half an hour and for our councillor candidates, about an hour. Uh, the forum will end at around 8.30 this evening. The rules have been shared with the candidates and are as follows. Each candidate will be provided with two minutes for an opening statement. Questions, um, the questions will follow. The mayoral candidates will have one or two minutes to respond to the questions depending on the question. The councillor candidates will have one minute to respond to all of the questions asked. For the mayoral candidates, each candidate will have an opportunity to respond to each question. The incumbent will respond first to the first question, followed by the challenger. The order will reverse for the next question, after which we will rotate back and forth. For our councillor candidates, one question will be provided to all nine candidates to respond to. After that, we will ask questions for three candidates to answer. We have nine councillor candidates, and so three groups of three candidates were determined ahead of time based on a random draw from the hat. Each group will be asked a different question. The order of response was also determined based on a draw from the hat and we will rotate that order as we go. Candidates will be provided with a 10 second verbal warning from, the, from myself, the moderator, if they are nearing the end of their time and will be muted if they run out of time. Each candidate will be provided with one minute then for a closing statement. So with that, let's get started with our candidates forum for mayor. And I would like to introduce our mayoral candidates, starting with our incumbent, Michael Musichka, and our challenger, Judy Dahl. So we will start with an opening statement from Michael, uh, from Mr. Musichka. Mr. Musichka, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Stuart. Good evening, everybody, and, and thank you for joining us. Let me just start out by saying what a great honour it has been to serve as your mayor for the past four years. And I am here today to humbly ask for your support for another four-year term. This current council and I are very proud of the many big accomplishments we have made over the past four years, and I would like to highlight a couple of those things. When I took over as mayor in 2017, the old fire department was not running up to its potential. The town then hired Justin Andrew as fire chief and Chief Andrew went right to work and pulled a, a, together a fractured membership into the incredible team that we have today. Council and I then struck the economic development secretariat. That brought our economic development officer together with representatives from the planning department the Olds and District Chamber of Commerce, the Olds College and the Olds Institute to work collaboratively and help existing businesses and attract new businesses to our area. This will help move Olds forward together. Here are some areas that I would like to focus on in the next four years if you choose to reelect me. Transparency. I believe the town can improve on transparency and we can, uh, improve on our communication with residents. Attracting doctors. During the campaign so far, I've heard from many residents that cannot find a family doctor with privileges to our own hospital. 
economic development. I want to continue the work with the community and industry leaders to foster our economic base. Lobby the Alberta government. I would like to make sure that Olds gets its fair Hi. share of, re of resources from the province. And finally, I would like to reduce debt. I have a plan to reduce the town of Olds debt by 40%. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next, Ms. Dahl. Judy, you're muted. There we go. That good? Ms. Dahl, you're good oh, now. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Yes. Hello and good evening, everyone. I welcome you tonight and acknowledge the Olds Chamber of Commerce Office volunteers, the Albertan Rock 104, for setup of this forum. I am grateful to have the opportunity to communicate and get together with candidates to hear each other's narrative of why we wish to serve. My name is Judy Dahl and my family moved to Olds in 1986. As a citizen of Olds, I have served in municipal government for 27 years and appreciate the growth pains and challenges we have faced, the team spirit of council, the skills that staff bring to council and our dedicated volunteers that are indeed an asset to our community. In my experience, I must say, municipal governments are the best stewards I know that work a collaborative process. I look forward to dialogue once again with our municipal area partnerships and Mountain View County. I will also seek to understand what relationships we share with our community partners. We continue to endorse the community's vision for sustainable future through our strategic plan and asset management strategy. This really energizes me as a great deal of this work went into this vision and I look forward to attempt with new council elect to find efficiencies and cost reductions for our fiscal responsibility. Olds is home to over 9,000 residents and I often hear that our town has everything to offer them. Thank you town employees for the picture perfect grooming of our parks, playgrounds, green spaces, trails, and much more. I am proud to call Olds my home and thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Dahl. Okay, we will move then to our first question and we will start with Mike and then move to Judy. The question uh, relates to the COVID pandemic. Olds has a high infection rate and an overcrowded hospital. What is your view regarding the approach taken regarding vaccinations, including AHS's rules regarding proof of vaccination? As mayor, how would you lead our community through the COVID pandemic? We are allowing two minutes for the response. Mr. Muzichka, it's your, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Stuart. Um, that's a great question. Um, please understand uh, everybody in the town of Olds that these restrictions and mandates are put on us by the Alberta government. Um, so I want to I want to first go out and please uh, say please don't chastise or harass our restaurant staff. Um, please don't yell at the staff at our arena or the or the pool. Um, they are just trying to follow the rules. Um, please don't call people sheep. Please don't call people rednecks. Um, these types of rhetoric just, just divide us even more. I know if I want my opinion heard, I have to first hear yours and respect yours as well. So these mandates coming down from the Alberta government are, are decreed by many uh, very, very highly trained experts. The town of Olds does not have the resources to uh, go outside and get as good or better experts. So it has uh, been the town's position and I feel it is correct uh, to uh, listen to what the Alberta Health Services and the Alberta government mandate and, and do our best to follow uh, those particular restrictions and mandates as they come down from the Alberta government. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mosichka. Ms. Dahl, over to you. You're muted. Okay. 
Are you, are you having troubles, Judy, unmuting? That works, um, yeah, okay. I'm here. You are. All right. Go ahead. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that I have had several calls uh, from the community with regards to uh, COVID. I don't have the direct access, ass, um, access that uh, the elected officials are having at this point in time. And I will say that in my opinion that everyone is entitled uh, to a choice when it comes to COVID-19. And however, I do want to stress that um, when you talk about your doctors, let's all be prepared. Um, if your choice is to be vaccinated or unvaccinated, there's one thing you do need to remember because we're all in, in a struggle of not knowing whether or whether or not we're going to get it. So let's just make sure that we have our Alberta Health Service goals and care document completed. Um, let's get the Alberta Personal Directive and agent named for health in the event that we can't talk and uh, let's get our wills updated and, and then you're ready in the event that uh, we end up in our overloaded hospitals right now. And as far as um, um, knowing where we're going to go, every day is a new day when it comes to the government. I do want to say as far as making decisions, I will be looking at the um, idea that I that we are seven elected officials and I'm only one vote. And it's something that I'd like to make sure that we discuss at the table and we all have a common ground on as well as be able to get some, um, some encouragement from our community, the professionals and the doctors, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dahl. Okay, the, second, the next question is for a one minute response. And Ms. Dahl, you will start. Do you believe we have an adequate number of doctors um, or doctors with hospital privileges? If so, what do you plan to do to maintain our capacity? If not, what do you plan to do about addressing this issue? Go ahead, Ms. Dahl. Well, I would like to start off with um, um, the doctors. I, the doctors in Olds and and the Alberta Health Services are the ones that, um, I understand the medical graduates and, and Alberta Health Services is the one that, that um, takes care of our doctors for our region. For our region. Um, what I would say is that the best answer in my opinion would be to recommend that we recreate, recreate a physician attraction and retention committee um, for physicians at the medical clinics, because I'm certain that both clinics are in need of additional physicians uh, to meet the patient health care needs in our community. And um, I am, I personally haven't experienced any problems. Fine, 10 advice. seconds. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Dahl. Mr. Muzichka. Thank you, Stuart. Um, no, I, I, I don't believe that there is enough doctors in our community. As I alluded to in my opening, I've heard from many residents who are having a difficult time finding a family doctor or finding uh, uh, timely appointments with the doctors that are here in town. Um, so I've done a bit of research on it. Uh, a while back, Council had a presentation from an organization called RPAP. It's a government-funded organization of, of mostly health ex-healthcare professionals uh, who will help communities like the town of Olds who are underserved um, attract and retain doctors. Um, I also believe that every doctor that practices normally in the town of Olds should have access to admitting privileges at our hospital, and I know that's not happening right now as well. So yeah, I'll welcome the Alberta government, the AHS, uh, in Red Deer to uh, make sure that that happens. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mizichka. Okay, uh, this next question is for a two minute response, starting with Mr. Mizichka. How will you deal with ONET after the next election? Will the municipally controlled corporation require additional investment in equity or debt? Will it be sold even at a discount? 
Thank you very much. Um, yes, very, very hot button topic. And yes, uh, uh, as of October 1st, all of the assets for ONET have been rolled into a municipally owned corporation. And uh, we will be going forward. Right now, uh, the board of directors of that uh, newly formed municipally controlled corporation uh, has been set to be council. Um, we, uh, after the election, uh, obviously there will be at least three new councillors on council. So uh, we will be putting the new councillors in as, as directors and the old councillors, of course, will be coming out depending on the results. Um, at that point in time, that council, will, the new council will be able to determine the short, long and medium term goals for Olds Fibre Limited going forward. Um, one of the uh, biggest recommendations out of the BDO report, the expert independent report that we had done uh, in the past, was that uh, it was probably best to find a new investor for the top, for the ONET tablet. Um, so I think it would be prudent for the council going forward uh, to really uh, address and reread re that um, particular report and get advice from BDO and the lawyers that have been employed and um, find out exactly what is the best steps to go forward with, with the ONET asset. Um, we're talking about $18 million of taxpayer-backed money here, folks. Um, this was a really difficult decision for council to step forward and take this bull by the horns. And I know it wasn't overly popular with some people in our town, but please understand that council, uh, the current council exactly. is doing the best we feel for all the taxpayers in our town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mizichka. Ms. Dahl. You're, you're muted again, Judy. Hello, oh, sorry. Yeah, you're there, good. That yeah. was great information and thank you for sharing that. Unfortunately, um, I don't have a, a lot of information in this regard. Um, I will say that with everything I've read that I do think that the new board uh, does make some logical sense. Um, what, I, what I'm not privy to is um, a lot of the background that was just shared by the uh, incumbent mayor. I, I do know that um, this is uh, the area that wanted, council wanted to have the full control of, and it'll allow council to have a better, at, at the end of the day, um, the council elect, it, it would allow us also to uh, get a better understanding of the operation. We certainly don't, or I certainly don't have the background um, to the logistics that were just shared. And, um, you know, uh, there has been a lot of uh, volunteers out there that uh, feel that there was some collaborating that could have been done and some resolving and, and resorting before going to legal action. Um, who's right, who's wrong? I certainly won't know unless I sit in a chair and, and sit down and get the full background. There was just uh, too many closed door meetings and um, not enough the uh, sharing there. So I, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. The council of the day makes the decision and uh, we'll move forward with it. And um, thank you very much for the opportunity to try and answer your question, but I, I feel I need more information on this topic. Thank you, Ms. Dahl. Uh, the next question is also a two minute response. How, and this, and, and we'll start with Ms. Dahl. How will you approach the budget and property taxes? I'll approach the, um, well, again, I wanna say to you that, um, again, this is uh, um, a discussion that needs to be around the table with all seven elected officials. I'm one vote again, and we need to do basically what Council has been doing um, their process that's been done has been put um, together in the past uh, to make it work and it seems to be working it, as the results have come out, uh, especially when you um, get to have the facts that we have had shared, especially in our building permit developments, 
We're so fortunate to have uh, such a diverse commercial, industrial, institutional, old college. We've got so much in our town uh, to be able to have steady growth. And as, as you all know, by looking at the facts from the past five years and even further back, um, our development and building and operations and planning um, is, is very stable. A lot of communities don't have what we have. So um, to answer your question, sitting at the table with all seven of us and also engaging our, our, our community uh, as is being done today, However, speaking, let's just um, try and be a little more fiscally responsible. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dahl. Mr. Mizetka, over to you. Thank you, Stuart. Um, yeah, great question about the budget. Um, the, the cornerstone of the budget is the budget survey. And that's where we uh, engage uh, everybody in the town of Old. Um, it's still up actually for this current year coming up. I believe uh, it'll be up on our uh, olds.ca website. Uh, so please uh, get out there until I think October 11th and and take uh, take that survey. It's very fulsome. It gives council invaluable um, uh, data to see exactly what you want to see in our budget. So yeah, it's that's the cornerstone is, is public engagement with within our budget. Now the current council has been very, very proud over the past two years to deliver a balanced budget with 0% increase to the mill rate. So uh, we worked very, very long and hard and, and at the end of those budgets in both years, we actually had a little bit of surplus left over. So we know there's a little room for improvement. So this year we will again go line by line with the new council. And yes, uh, yes, Judy, you're exactly right. Every councillor is one of seven votes and everybody has a voice around that table. And we've had great spirited debates. We don't always agree, but uh, we always come to a consensus. And um, I think we've done really, really well over the past four years with, uh, again, those zero percent budget increases. And um, I believe that uh, this year will be no different. Uh, I trust that we'll get to a very balanced budget and, and hopefully have no increase. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next question is, a one, is for a one minute response and we'll start with Mr. Muzichka. Other than COVID, Olds Institute or ONAT, what are the three main issues facing the town? Well, thank you very much. I, I alluded to them, I think, in my opening, um, uh, Stuart. Uh, I think uh, transparency needs to be better. I know a lot of people have uh, have talked about the closed door meetings, but uh, town council is is handcuffed by the MGA and FOIP. Um, we have to go and do closed meetings on certain things. When it comes to private business of a private for-profit corporation, we cannot divulge that information. It's just legally not possible. So the transparency when we can do it is, is definitely important and there are ways we can uh, improve that transparency. Also the communication with the residents, we can certainly improve that. Um, economic development is the cornerstone of everything. If we don't have good economic development and the growth that Judy just talked about, uh, we don't really have a budget or, or, or a town. And I'd like to continue lobbying the Alberta government to get our fair share. Thank you, Mr. Mizichka. Ms. Dahl. Thank you. Um, for me, I'm going to say um, collaboration. Collaboration is important to me. I haven't heard a lot from, uh, well, of course, I'm not involved in it as much as I have been in the past, but I see um, some good things that are coming out of the reports um, on the Town of Old's website and what I see on your handouts, your community overview, and, and the things that I've read. Um, I see that there is still the Municipal Area Partnership, Central Alberta Mayors. Uh, there's been lots of additions. However, I do think we have to get a little um, closer on our, our community partners. Um, I don't hear anything anymore about Old's College. I don't hear anything more about the old Zag Society. I also feel that the code of conduct is extremely important okay. and less closed meetings. The 
I, I really appreciate uh, all the work that's been done. Thank you, Ms. Dahl. The next question is for a one minute response and we'll start again with Ms. or we'll start with Ms. Dahl. Um, candidates have stated that the town of Olds needs to communicate with its citizens in a better manner. How do you propose to do that? Well, I, I, I feel strongly that that is uh, possible, but I, again, I have been using for my information um, the Town of Olds website, and I'm very, very proud to see um, all the work that's been done over the past years. Um, it's, it's very clear and concise. Um, I would say to continue to reach out and through engagement on the Town of Olds website, as well as um, continue to invite them to the council chambers as we've done in the past, and uh, trust that they will show up and have some dialogue with us and some uh, very good questions and answers. I believe in the power of questions and I look forward to it. Thank you, Mr. Mizichka. Thank you, Stuart. Um, yes, like I alluded to before, I, I feel there's a, a lot of room for improvement. Um, the Town of Old's website has been retooled and it is a very good tool to get information out. Um, we have uh, social media pages on Facebook, Instagram and, and the like. Um, I think those are great ideas. Uh, at a conference not so long ago, I did see a presentation on communication. And uh, apparently there's some software where people can register their email addresses and their telephone numbers where they can receive text message updates from the town. So we will be, uh, I'd like to explore that as part of my uh, uh, um, arm on, on communication if I should get reelected this year. So I think there's all kinds of innovative ways to try and communicate with the general public and there's all neat new technologies. So we need to explore those and find ways to better communicate. Thank you, Mr. Mizichka. Um, the next question is for a one minute response. Um, starting with Mr. Muzichka, what will you do for economic development in the community of Olds? Excellent. Thank you, uh, Stuart. Yes, we've, uh, as I alluded to earlier, we've set up the Economic Secretari uh, Development Secretariat. Uh, we uh, are collaborating with a number of uh, uh, community partners, as I alluded to as well. Um, I'd like to see, uh, we're going to shift a little bit. The plan is to shift a little bit into uh, a committee called BRI, which is Business Retention, Investment and Expansion. And that will uh, have not only all the community partners I listed before, uh, but we're going to tap on the shoulders of different industry and, and commercial entities and get some representation from, from real world business owners uh, in our community to come to that table as well and all collaborate and brainstorm and come up with great ideas to help uh, foster the economic development initiative in our town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mizichka. Uh, Ms. Dahl. There, I finally got it. <laughs> okay. Um, well, this is all new to me. I really, really like the idea of the Economic uh, Development Secretary. I understand they meet with the uh, Central Alberta Economic Partnership. I understand that they also have a task force um, that works with emer emergency management teams. Um, there is an awful lot that I will need to sit down and do some homework with, and I appreciate and look forward to the opportunity to learn more about the Economic Development Secretary. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Dahl. Okay, this brings us to the end of our questions for our mayoral candidates. Each candidate will now provide a one-minute closing statement, starting with Ms. Dahl. I wish to thank everyone for your time and patience this evening. I am seeking your approval to serve as your mayor in Olds on October 18. As your mayor, my responsibility is to consider the welfare and interests of our municipality as a whole and to enhance the quality of life for all cultures and people. I believe we can serve together on an agreed common vision that builds trusted relationships and partnerships for our community. I'm a fair-minded individual and consensus builder and proud to be a part of a community 
that keeps giving and growing. I look forward to reconnect, plan, and share ideas with you for our future. Please vote Judy Dahl. Your voice counts. Thank you, Ms. Dahl. Mr. Musichka. Thank you very much. In closing, I would like to thank the many residents that I have been able to engage with over this campaign period. Your thoughts, your suggestions, and your inputs have shaped the platform, uh, my campaign platform that I have come up with to date. I would like to thank the current council for all the spirited debates that we've had over the years and our many accomplishments over the past four years. I would also like to thank our amazing volunteer base. Your tireless effort, your spirit, your commitment to excellence make our community the amazing place that it is. If I am reelected, I will lobby the new council to improve transparency, attract doctors, foster economic development, lobby the Alberta government, and reduce the debt by 40%. And most importantly, I want to help move Olds forward together. So on October 18th, please remember, get out there and vote Mazichka. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mazichka. And thank you, uh, Mike and Judy, um, for uh, your, your time this evening and your uh, willingness to answer the questions of the community. This brings us to an end of our mayoral candidate forum. And we will now begin our councillor candidate forum. And I'd like to introduce our candidates in alphabetical order, starting with Janelle Adams, Wanda Blatz, James Cummings, Daniel Daly, Marianne Overwater, Heather Ryan, Harvey Walsh, Lucinda Watkins, and Darren Wilson. We will start with a two minute opening statement with Ms. Adams. Ms. Adams, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. Um, can you guys hear me okay? We can. Okay, awesome. Uh, my name is Janelle Adams. I am a mother of three, and we moved here seven years ago to Olds. And as soon as we came in, um, we were welcomed. We stayed at the hotel. We went and checked out the school, and it was just a place that we knew we were going to call home. Um, with the current situation and everything going on, and talking with people, um, I decided to put my name in the running for council. Um, you know, I feel there is a population that is underrepresented and stepping into this, I've done just a bit more research on how the things um, work behind the scenes and, um, you know, being, um, a strong advocate and communication and transparency, but also um, needing accountability back from the citizens. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Ms. Blatz, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Wanda Blatz and I'm seeking re-election for a second term to represent you on town council. I've proudly lived in the town of Oles for over 40 years. My husband and I have raised our family here and operate a business. I have a background in financial banking as a municipal employee and I've volunteered for many community organizations. In 2017, I decided to run for a position as council. As a proud resident, I wanted to contribute to our community. I had no issues or agenda items, but I had many questions on communication, finances, and debt levels. Over the past four years, this council has advocated for increased communication for all residents. On council, I've participated in very robust service level reviews, which have led into budget deliberations. Myself and council have been very direct with staff to find efficiencies within the budget and have successfully kept the tax rate at 0% for the past two years. Although this council has many successes to which I'm proud of, this council has also had to make some extremely tough de decisions and I stand behind them. The next four years there'll be many faces, many challenges facing the new council. This council will have to contribute, continue to develop strategies for immediate and long-term financial stability. 
seek efficiencies in the budget process while maintaining service levels, challenge the budget, budget process, respecting how the rate um, tax rates, tra tax dollars are spent as residents are already faced with rising cost of living. I, Wanda Blatz, will re represent the residents of the town of Olds. I will listen and respond as I am invested in your community and the future of our great town. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Mr. Cummings, the floor is yours. Hi, everybody. So uh, my name is James Cummings and uh, like uh, Janelle, I moved to Olds about seven years ago, six, six and a half years ago, after I retired from the military. I was in the military for uh, 21 years. I came to Olds uh, as, a, as a trip to find out about the town and we decided to, to stay here because we also found that this was just an amazing town. Uh, since then, we've uh, opened up a couple of businesses here in town. Uh, right at the beginning of the uh, COVID restrictions, which is an awesome experience. Don't recommend it. Um, but it allowed us to see firsthand the effects of the restrictions, the effects uh, that were done to the economy, not just our, our, our personal lives and whatnot, but the economy itself. Uh, spoke to a lot of my uh, fellow small business owners here in town when we were on the Uptown Olds Association here in the Uptown area. Um, how many people we had to lay off. And that's a big thing to think of, not only the financial str uh, stress that was placed on us, the business owners, but our staff. I mean, I employ nine people and at the points in time, I've had to lay off all nine of those people. And I know that a lot of other businesses have done that. So economic uh, stability and economic future is, is a key factor in our town. It's something that needs to be looked at in, under every decision we make. How is it going to affect our economy? How is it going to make it stronger? And that's a key looking forward. Um, some other things about me, I'm a technician. So in the, in the military, I was a control systems technician. And I believe that we have a process that we have to employ when we look at every issue, review that process after we started working on it, make corrections and decisions on that and move forward that way. And if we look at every single issue that way, we can't help but make the best decision, whether it's Second. all seven of us working on it or if we bring other people in to help out, which is the biggest thing as well. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Daly, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, good evening, panel members and um, citizens of Olds. As Stuart said, my name is Dan Daly and uh, uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, I was born and raised in a small farm, small mixed farm just outside of Camrose. And so uh, I have always been very community minded as far as uh, in my upbringing within our family and within our community. Uh, I attended Olds College back in the early 80s, actually, as my first experience to uh, the town of Olds. And uh, while attending college here, I was, I was uh, quite involved with the college life uh, clubs and governance that happened within the college as well on the student side of things. I always knew that I wanted to come back and teach uh, in the Olds College. And in the 1990s, I, early 90s, I did have the opportunity to come back and, and work at the Olds College. I started off as an instructional assistant in the uh, trades programs and ended up uh, through professional development and experience. I've worked my way up through instructor, coordinator, chair, and dean, which is the position that I hold now for approximately 10 years now. Um, also in my time, I spend a lot of time volunteering with several organizations within the community, which usually ends up um, falling into some sort of leadership capacity within those organizations. Uh, some of these organizations that I was involved with was 4-H, Trout, Trout Unlimited, Ducks Unlimited, Mount View Pistons Car Club, uh, Olds College alumni. I was a board member as well as the president there for, for a, a certain time. Olds Institute for Community and Regional Development. I was a board, public board member as, where, as well as a chair. If, if you elect me for a council, you can count on me for integrity, transparency, and experience. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Uh, Ms. Overwater, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stuart. Welcome. 
I am Marianne Overwater and I'm seeking your support and vote on October 18th. With my eight years on council, I have the experience and knowledge to serve as your councillor for another term. I know the commitment that is required to be a councillor for the town of Olds. I am very passionate about our community. I have lived here for 29 years and I want to be able to continue to help grow this community and continue to make Olds the community of choice. I would like to continue working closely with the RCMP, the Municipal Enforcement and the Police Advisory Committee to keep our community safe. Continue to work with all groups to make our community welcoming and inclusive and a thriving place to live, work and play. I will continue to advocate to bring new businesses into the community and help the economic recovery of the current businesses. I will advocate for seniors to keep them in their homes as long as possible. I will ad advocate for attainable housing. I will advocate advocate for our recreational users. Yes, I am in favor of outdoor rinks. I am a proven leader and I'm not afraid to address the issues that our community is facing. I've brought your voice to council in the past and will continue to advocate for everyone in the community. People who know me know that I face challenges head on and that I do not hide behind Facebook or news articles. I'm approachable and will always be available to really listen and hear you. I want to continue the, the momentum that we have started, which we have not had in the past. We now have accessibility and open communication to the ministers of the government of Alberta. I do not have a hidden agenda for, agenda for seeking re-election on town council. I never did in the last eight years, and I certainly will not now. Campaigning on a one issue agenda is not healthy for our community. I'm here for the greater good of all. Your concerns are my Thank concerns. You and I will bring them to the council table for fulsome discussions and decisions. I've always been accountable for my statements and have stood by the decisions of council. Vote Marianne Overwater on October. Thank you, Ms. Overwater. Ms. Ryan, the floor is yours. Thank you. It was time in the host was not unmuting me. So <laughs> thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Heather Ryan, and it has been my honor and privilege to serve as town councillor for the past four years. I moved to Old seven years ago with my husband, Mike, and our dog, Becca. And I started a small home based uh, business doing dog sitting and boarding because I saw a gap of, in that service and I knew that I could fill it. I wanted to, to get involved in the community right away, so I volunteered for the uh, for three years on the Municipal Planning Commission before being elected to council in 2017. But I'm a journalist, and as such, I know the importance of communication. And as your counselor, I ask questions. I listen to residents and business owners. I voiced their concerns over the past four years and will continue to do this if re-elected. This council has done more public engagement and surveys than any previous, and I have been responsive, accountable, and committed to serving everyone in Olds, and I will continue to do so if I'm reelected. I have been fiscally responsible, voting in favor of a 0% tax increase over the last two years, and if elected, um, I will continue to look for efficiencies in the budget and to keep taxes low while maintaining the services that we all enjoy. I supported the formation of an economic development secretariat to assist our local businesses, but also to attract new ones um, and to grow our economy, which is really important. I voted in favor of developing new residential communities that offer a diverse mix of attainable housing. And uh, hopefully those, those communities will go forward. I have always been open, honest, transparent, and always put the best interests of the town first and foremost when making decisions on council. On October 18th, vote to re-elect Heather Ryan. Thank you, Ms. Ryan. Mr. Walsh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stuart. Good evening, candidates and citizens of Olds. Thank you for your participation tonight. My name is Harvey Walsh and I'm seeking your vote on October 18th. I will be posting this evening's intro on my website, walshforolds.com. I bring considerable experience as a past counselor, small business owner, and a community volunteer. Currently, I serve as president on the boards of Westview Co-op and the Olds and District Hospice Society. 
I'm also a director on the accredited supports to the community board. I have a lot of experience and training in governance. My reason for running for council this time is that I am very concerned with what I and many others see as our current council's secretive approach to decisions that have a major and long-term impact on our community. Democracy demands open debate, and this council has spent too many hours and meetings closed to the public. I'm familiar with how in-camera meetings work by manipulating the parameters of land, legal, and labor criteria. Almost any item can be discussed to deny information to the public. There are legitimate reasons for having closed meetings, but this format can be abused. Another reason for my decision to return to council is the erosion of relationships that I see with the county and local organizations. It has taken years to build trust and cooperation, yet this can be destroyed by something like a press release threatening to deny fire service to rural areas. Additionally, it has been discouraging for so many volunteers in our community to be disrespected and marginalized by town council. The process to eliminate Olds Institute and take over old net was not done without any effort to resolve issues through discussion and collaboration. Council demanded payment of a loan that was not in default through a lawyer, which prevented all discussion. 10 seconds at a cost of many hundreds of thousands of dollars. I believe that a new council can and will do better. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Ms. Watkins, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, Olds is my home and I care deeply about this being an amazing place to work and raise a family. I lived here in high school and returned uh, in my 20s. Olds has been home for 14 years now. I founded and I run a nonprofit called the Community Lending Shelf since 2008. I volunteer on the library board for four years and in 2017, 2018, I was awarded Citizen of the Year by the Rotary Club of Olds. I am a mom, a business owner, volunteer, and I ran for town council in 2010. I sat in on town council meetings for a full year leading up to that election. I learned so much through that process. All of the issues that are happening right now affect all of us and we're feeling these issues deeply. I'm running because I'm passionate about all of these issues. I've watched big changes and decisions happening over the past few years. And rather than do nothing, I decided to put my name forward. I wanted to be heard and more importantly, I want you to be heard. <clears throat> my platform is community integrity and transparency. They're not just words. We need a strong connected community to thrive. My definition of community it's when we're all working together as a team for greater good. A good example of that can be taken from the community lending shelf. When people need help and we can't provide that, I reach out to other community groups <clears throat> for their assistance. The communication, collaboration, and cooperation from an interaction like that to help somebody else is exactly what creates community. I've seen it in our business community with the Uptona Olds group. They work together as a team to promote and support each other. Small businesses that are not in competition but in collaboration, these things create community. On town council, we can create this sense of community by working with stakeholders, other municipalities and the county. Other thing that's important is integrity. Huge part of integrity is fiscal responsibility. Transparency and means second. open doors, open minds and open discussions. I believe we can create a culture of community and open communication. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Watkins. Mr. Wilson, the floor is yours. I'm Darren Wilson, time for change. I'm committed to public engagement, building trust and sustainable choices for the purposes of community development. It is time for the community to come together, mend relationships and promote and market the town of Olds as a destination of choice for families, business, investment and tourism. The future of Onet and Mountain View Power within the Municipal Control Corporation will require careful analysis and consideration of options and financial impacts to the town and investors as well as a governance responsibility. The town will also need to address the void with respect to Olds Institute, which provided non-political support for volunteer committees, which are essential to community development. Opportunities will emerge out of the pandemic, supporting the Secretariat on the execution of a strategy to promote business retention, investment and tourism will be essential. The strategy will need to have specific measurable deliverables with timelines. Small business is the backbone of a thriving municipality. A recent survey by the Canadian Federation of Independent Business indicates 93% of members 
believe municipality costs and property taxes should be a priority. Continuing to ensure spending is linked to inflation and population growth, restraint in municipal operating expenditures and identifying efficiencies can help to address cost pressures. Competitive property taxes and tax fairness can differentiate olds from other municipalities. Continued red tape reduction, enabling developers and planners, ensuring access to the highest obtainable standard of community health care, affordable housing, and creating a vibrant arts, culture, and entertainment component can help make olds a preferred choice. Managing debt exposure is another priority. The 2020 long-term municipal debt per capita has doubled since 2017 to $3,400. The total 30-year borrowing interest on the operations center is $4.7 million. <laughs> Sustainable choices balancing present and future will help position Olds for the long term. Follow me on Facebook, Darren Wilson for Olds Town Council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Okay, we will now move into the questions uh, part of, the, of this forum. Uh, so candidates, again, you will have one minute for each question. The first question will be for all of the candidates to respond to based on the order determined by a random draw from the hat. So the question is, how will you deal with ONET after the next election? Are you supportive of additional investment in equity or debt? Do you support it being sold even at a discount? And the first to respond will be Ms. Blatz. Thank you, Stuart. You're probably gonna to have to repeat some of that because I did get parts of it, but for the past year, for well, for the past four years, since I was elected in 2017, there were many questions that, that arose in regards to ONET and Owls Institute. Most of them were, what were we going to do with the debt? And exactly what did ONET do for the, or what did Owls Institute do for the community? Through this process for the past four years, we had tried to engage several times with these boards, with the board, particularly the Owls Institute to try and get some answers as to what direction the, and, and fiscal responsibility was behind the whole organization. Anyway, it didn't, uh, there was lack of communication perhaps, and maybe it was on both sides, it's hard to say. The decision was made then to take the organization over, to try and find some way to evolve and um, get some answers. And I would like to continue with this process if I'm reelected to ensure that we can protect the rights of our, or the, thank, thank you. Mr. you. Mr. Wilson. There's no doubt uh, ONET's a valuable resource. Uh, and I think going forward, careful consideration will have to be given to the long-term future. ONET doesn't need any more debt, certainly not from the town, uh, either directly or in the form of guarantees. We'll need to, the, the municipal court will need to actively look for partners, uh, equity injection, whether that's from development co-ops or, or other means, uh, but certainly for ONET to grow, it will need to find injections of equity and a careful analysis of a sale. I don't support a sale at a loss, um, certainly in an impact to the, uh, the town uh, citizens. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Ms. Watkins. Thank you, yes. I think on this, this issue, there's a lot of missing information for those of us um, that weren't able to participate in those meetings to hear everything that happened. Um, if elected, I look forward to hearing the whole story and looking at the whole picture um, that includes the numbers. It's going to take some responsibility and some tough decisions and tough dis discussions. Um, I think first and foremost, we need to honor the history of ONET, uh, the organizations and the volunteers that were involved um, in, in creating it. I think it, it's, it was a wonderful thing. It is a wonderful thing. And I think we need to kind of spend some time honoring those people. Thank you. Ms. Adams. Yeah, I don't have any um, privy information. I guess um, if I was elected, it's something that I would take serious and look into and um, just weigh the impact either way 
of um, the effect on the citizens. And I like what Lucinda touched on is honoring um, what ONET um, has done, so. Thank you. Ms. Ryan. Uh, thank you. I, um, with regards to this whole issue, it's very convoluted. And yes, there was a lot of indoor in uh, campus camera discussion because it uh, cannot be discussed in public um, uh, a business. And um, obviously you don't wanna have some uh, uh, information to get out in pub into the public uh, realm. But uh, Councilor Bots had mentioned earlier about um, uh, people coming to us. And I know that uh, when I campaigned, a lot of people questioned where the money was going to and the, what the debt was, what was happening with the debt. Uh, this is an $18 million debt and it has to be taken very seriously. You need to have lawyers involved. I don't want to handle $18 million without it. Going forward, the Municipal Control Corporation will need to look at how ways of, of uh, working through that debt and certainly look at um, possible investors for the future. Ten seconds. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Daly. There we go. Um, yeah, so uh, there's been a lot of water under the bridge since since this has uh, taken place. And, and yeah, there's been a, a, a bit of a, uh, hardship to try to get information out of it. Um, you know, we look back at the history of Olds Institute and the reason for the, uh, or the purpose for the Institute was to grow the re regional economic development. And ONET was a big part of that as well as Mount View Power, as well as Mount View Gas. Um, these are all valuable resources to our town. I, I do not agree with the sale of, of these uh, assets. And I believe that if I was elected council, we'd have to sit down and, and have a good hard look at the future of ONET and a, a futuristic plan for it, maintaining the ownership within the town of Olds. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Ms. Overwater. Thank you. I could say ditto to a lot of things. Um, okay, uh, Olds Institute, it was a volunteer organization that uh, looked after a, a few hundred volunteers and that's how it started out. Then um, the purpose was to uh, get, a, get involved in a telecommunication company and um, you know we had volunteers doing that and I uh, applaud their, their efforts but um, you know at the end of the day some you know we're not telecommunications experts and um, for ONET, to, or ONET will survive. ONET is a great organization. I have ONET and, um, you know, I think a lot of other people in town have ONET. ONET is not the question, it's the debt of $18 million that could possibly be put on the taxpayers because at the end of the day, ONET has never been exactly. going to be sustainable and be able to be profitable. So this is where we're at today. And I know that doesn't help, a lot of people, but. Thank you, Mrs. Overwater. Thank you. Mr. Cummings. Thanks. So it's been alluded to a couple of times here, um, privy information and whatnot. So there's four members of the group here today that have a lot of information on the town side. There's a couple of people on this uh, board here that were part of the town before, part of Olds Institute. They've got a lot more information than we do. To me, the, what happened in the past happened in the past and we need to look forward. So we've got a, a municipal control corporation where for some reason, uh, town councillors are the board of directors. That's odd. Um, shareholders appoint board of directors or directors to a board who know how to do stuff. I'm a small business owner. I don't know how to run a huge telecommunication company with $18 million in asset or however many dollars in assets they have. And uh, I, I would be misplaced sitting on a board of directors as, as a shareholder committee or a shareholder board or something like that. Um, that makes a lot of sense. But uh, we need to get people that know what they're doing in that industry, running that industry to make sure it's done properly. Thank you. Mr. Walsh. Thank you. It's amazing. I've been on working with ONET for well over a decade. It has been profitable for the last several years. It's met its obligations of payment to the town. 
this current council actually restructured the payment in 2018. It is a profitable organization and it has debt, not unsimilar to a lot of organizations. And the debt is held by the town of Olds. That seems to be the problem. I would say that no, I would not sell ONET at a discount. And agreeing with James Cummings, you need to have a board of directors that understand telecommunications and the issues around that, not to have it populated by town council. You know, we went from a, a paid- 10 seconds. And that's it. I don't think it should be a town council board. All right. Okay. Uh, the next question is for Ms. Blatz, Mr. Wilson, and Ms. Watkins. Starting with Ms. Blatz. Olds College has a high infection rate and an overcrowded hospital. What is your view regarding the approach taken regarding vaccinations, including AHS's rules regarding proof of vaccination? As counselor, how will you lead our community through the COVID pandemic? Thank you for that question. Um, I've had this question an, an awful lot in the last few weeks, particularly when the latest restrictions came down with the restricted exemption program. And as I've stated, it's very concerning for anyone who gets COVID. Um, it's a very serious disease, a very infectious disease, contagious disease, and some people get very ill from it. And I've per her personally chosen to become vaccinated for my own reasons. I know many people choose not to be vaccinated. That is certainly their reason. As an elected official, I don't believe it is my, um, my duty to tell people what to do one way or the other. And I, I've stated this several times, with my choices come consequences, with everyone else's choices come consequences. And I think that we need to do something to reduce the spread of this disease and try and ensure that all of our citizens are safe and healthy. And what the exact answer is, there's no right or wrong answer I could give. Thank you, Ms. Blatz. Mr. Wilson. Thank you. It's a very complex issue, obviously, a variety of factors, including ethics, privacy, workplace health and safety. Ultimately, I respect people's choices, but there's also a balance in terms of protecting the integrity of the healthcare system and people. Uh, and clearly, it, it becomes a, we've evolved into a public health emergency uh, from a public emergency. I think people need to certainly have the right to their own choice, make their own risk assessment in terms of the likelihood of events and the consequences for those events and, um, and make their decision accordingly. But I, I think we're in the position we are due to some inappropriate prior public policy that has taken us now to a general public health emergency and crisis and, and preserving that is critical. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Watkins. Thank you. Uh, it's it's really this one's about balance. It's about balancing uh, public health and and balancing people's income and livelihood. You're talking to somebody who lost two jobs through some of these mandates and shutdowns. Um, both roles were health and wellness related. We're talking building up people's immune systems. So I've been frustrated, um, and I really want businesses to survive. Um, I think our role as municipal government is to represent people's voice. Restrictions that divide people between unvaccinated and vaccinated doesn't create community. Um, and so I thought we're seeing a lot of that right now. Um, I think our, the role of the town should be speaking to our MLAs who are supposed to be our, vo our voice to the Alberta government about how people are feeling. So that's really the role there. We need to be writing to our MLA and talking to them about how we feel about these mandates and how, how it's affecting the community. Thank you. Okay, our next question is for Ms. Adams, Ms. Ryan, and Mr. Daly. How will you approach the budget and property taxes? Ms. Adams. Well, um, we have to, we can only spend what we're taking in and, you know, I guess that's, we have to look at what is, um, 
you know, our financial reserves and, you know, what amount is being aside for future projects and what amount is being set aside for emergency savings account. I think right now we're in a situation of being forced by the government on grants and stuff. So I would like to see us have a little bit more independence um, and not rely on the government grants. Thank you. Ms. Ryan. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, uh, I'm a very fiscal responsible person. I'm fairly frugal and I go through that budget line by line and look for efficiencies everywhere. Uh, we also go through an extensive service level review to try to, to decide what, uh, where our money needs to be spent and where we need increases. And that's done before we do the budget. So we have a good way of going into the budget. We know where, where we need to spend more, where we can cut. Um, I've also been a uh, proponent of using uh, buying used vehicles instead of uh, new for our fleet and rotating our vehicles so that heavily used uh, vehicles and departments move to um, less areas and therefore we can uh, lengthen the life span of our vehicles. And I do not believe in going over our debt limit and I uh, voted exactly. against uh, doing that. So uh, uh, being fiscally responsible is all about what I am. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Daly. So when we talk about um, budgets and we talk about taxes, uh, we look at a very delicate balance that has to take place there in regards to wants and needs. And of course, our uh, fiscal responsibility to the taxpayers of roles. And so in, in these times, there's a lot of, a lot of people that are in, in crisis and, and or stressed financially in regards to taxes and utilities in the town of Wolves. Uh, if I was elected councillor, I would look very closely at what these wants and needs are and be very conscious of our decisions moving forward, looking at priorities within the budget that needs to be addressed and then look at the, at the, at the wants after that, as far as, uh, you, know, we, you know, we're looking at uh, fleet vehicles, things that may, we may be able to extend the life of and so forth. So it's all about budget management and uh, being respectful and accountable to the public. Thank you. Okay, our next question is for Ms. Overwater, Mr. Cummings and Mr. Walsh. What will you do for economic development in the community of Olds? Ms. Overwater. Economic development, that is a, that's a huge topic. And, um, you know, that, that's why we uh, at council, the, um, the secretariat, they in turn uh, work very closely with our business group in the community. And um, economic development, we also, um, you know, we, we uh, did not um, charge businesses their licenses. This year, we uh, had grants for them to help with their PPPs, PPEs, and um, economic development. We also belong to Central Alberta Economic Partnership, which also looks after uh, the whole central region for uh, bringing in new businesses uh, from anywhere across Canada that would like to set up in, in Central Alberta, Ten which um, will add many jobs, many uh I'm sorry, I'm just at a loss of words for economic development. Okay. It's okay. Thank you. Mr. Cummings. Sorry, the, the button to press keeps moving around my screen. There we go. So the economy uh, on my platform and my literature and online is the number one uh, factor that I'm looking at because it's the foundation of everything else. Um, it's a foundation of our ability to buy things and, and participate in community events. Uh, it, it brings people here because they are looking for work. So uh, the secretariat, I had to look up the definition of secretariat because I thought it was an odd word to use uh, to name something in, in the town to find out that it is, is simply a, a group of civil servants. And um, collaboration then becomes the most important thing because a group of civil servants may not necessarily understand the economy 
uh, in general, other than from a political perspective. So who do you need to talk to? You need to talk to the Uptown Olds Association, which I'm a member of here in town. You also need to speak to the Chamber of Commerce. You need to go out to the businesses that don't communicate in those groups and talk to them. And, and that sort of collaborative work and collaborative framework is where you move forward on the economy. Thank you. Mr. Walsh. Yeah, the economic development is about employing people. And it's important that small and medium-sized businesses have an ability to start a business within a community like ours. Then Uptown Olds, Chamber of Commerce all play a role. It's important that people who want to start a business have access to the information they need to start a business. It's not a matter of attracting huge corporations because it's not going to happen in this town. But with ONET and all, a lot of the services that we do provide, it's become a very desirable community to grow a business. And we need to encourage that mainly by asking people and helping people set up their business. Thank you. The next question is for Ms. Blatz, Mr. Wilson and Ms. Watkins, and we will go in the reverse order from last time. And the question is, other than COVID, Olds Institute, and ONET, what are the three main issues facing the town? Ms. Watkins. I've spent a lot of time over the last couple of weeks talking to people and listening to what their issues um, are. And I'm hearing a lot of things about bylaws, um, bylaws on uh, garbage, snow removal, chickens and art. Um, and I think that comes back to communication. So teaching people um, the ways to communicate uh, those things that are bothering them. So bylaws, communication, it all kind of ties together and being able to understand. I love the idea of us doing, um, of the town doing those feedback forms where you can give you the feedback, but maybe helping educate people about how they can bring forward those things that are really important to them and impact their business. Snow removal is one that I've heard that's impacting businesses um, that how can they appeal that to the town? Thank you. Mr. Wilson. Thank you. I think first and foremost for me, certainly is economic development uh, and community development, getting olds uh, rolling again. I, in my literature, I, I indicate that olds is a, is a good community. We've got great infrastructure. We've got a lot of great services, but it can become better. Uh, tied in with that is, again, as I said in my opening remarks, uh, doing some community mending and, and uh, moving forward. I think there's a little bit of hurt uh, in the community. And so we need to focus on that. And, and the third aspect would be, again, physical and debt management. And a, a fourth one I would add would be, uh, again, resolving this issue or the, the question around physician access to hospital rights and the amount of physicians in town. Thank you. Ms. Blatz. Thank you. Three issues that are... Uh, that are, are with the town. I've heard a lot, an awful lot in the past few weeks too about the communication and communication is a two-way street, street and people have to learn to ask the questions and come forward to get the answers. Quite typically, we try to provide them the best we can with the information that we all have. And taxes, of course, has been another really big issue because everybody's afraid what the future is going to bring because we none of us have a crystal ball coming out of COVID when it, does, when it does happen and even putting COVID aside, I mean, we're gonna have some tough challenges and we're gonna have to face them head on and do the best that we can to, um, to reduce, to keep taxes and, and maintain service levels. And the other issues I think that we have too are just making our community healthy, a, a safe and healthy okay. place to live. You know, we need to communicate better and, and, and with the police forces and and with our, our medical professionals to make sure that our citizens do have that availability. Okay, um, our next question um, is for Ms. Adams, 
Ms. Ryan and Mr. Daly in reverse order from the last time. The question is, please provide a brief summary of your understanding of the roles and responsibilities of an elected official. Mr. Daly. So my understanding of an elect elective official is uh, first and foremost, respect. Respect for everybody that, that, uh, that the council deals with. And that includes our uh, first and foremost, of course, our citizens, and then also uh, our partnerships within the, within the community. The other uh, number two on my list would be accountability and to be able to stand behind the decisions that you make using, using information uh, gathered uh, from the community and from the citizens to make the decisions that are best for the town of Oles. Um, and I think the, uh, the third is the communication of the business of the town to make sure that we keep in touch with our citizens Tense. and that we make sure that uh, 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 what we're conveying to the citizens and what the citizens are conveying to us is accurate. Thank you. Ms. Ryan. Uh, thank you. You know, uh, one of the first things is uh, is accountability, and uh, certainly you need to be able to, uh, you know, stand up and and be accountable for what you're what you're saying and what you're doing. I agree. Uh, respect is another one. Uh, certainly, listening to people and voicing their concerns and being responsive; those are all things you can't have people coming to you with a question and then never getting back to them. Um, I think also you need to make sure that you represent everybody and not just a, a small group of people and not just uh, one issue or one, one small group. You need to represent all the people in Olds and you need to communicate what you're doing and what your values are. I think uh, on council, you also have to work with people. You, you need to be able to sit down and, and uh, have respect for your fellow councillors, um, you know, be open and honest and... And again, um, and just be responsive and uh, respectful, transparent. Thank you. M Ms. Adams. Thank you. Um, my role is to consider the welfare and interest of the, of the municipality as a whole and to bring to council's attention anything that would promote the welfare or interests of the people that they bring to me. Thank you. Okay, our next question is for Ms. Overwater, Mr. Cummings and Mr. Walsh, again in reverse order from the last time. And the question is, candidates have stated that the town of Olds needs to communicate with its citizens in a better manner. How do you propose to do that? Mr. Walsh. Yeah, communicating is an important part of a counselor's job. And that's talking to people mainly. That's what communicating is about. But given the size and, and the amount of information that comes out of the town, you would need to be having a great website. You need to be able to use technology today like we all doing with our phones and with our computers. It's a and I've heard it said that it's a two-way street, but I think most residents are wanting to know what is happening at town council, and they like to see the open debate and open decisions. So that's a very important part of the, the communicating. Thank you. Mr. Cummings. So communication, Everybody knows communication is the most important thing. Uh, I can tell you from experience with over 20 years in the military, the, the greatest point of failure in every exercise or mission we control is, is communication. And it's the same in a town, it's the same everywhere in a relationship. Um, and the number one failure we have is we, we hear, we ask people what they wanna say or what they wanna tell us, but we don't really listen. And that's a, that's a problem. And that, that, that ability to listen to people and, and absorb what they're saying and then consider what they're saying is super important. Uh, Harvey talked about uh, the medium, the, the technology of medium that's out there today. I think sometimes we forget that technology isn't the, the answer to every question. 
uh, you see something being built on the side of the road and, and there's no, why isn't there a sign there just saying, hey, this is being built here. Uh, that To me, that uh, immediate choice of medium is, is, is as important as the ability to listen. Thank you. Ms. Overwater. Thanks, Stuart. Yes, communication is a, is a top priority. It has been for this council and uh, in between the, the social medias, the newspaper, the utility bills, the website, we've uh, won awards on public engagements and I think we do a great job on all the public engagements. Uh, we advertise those, uh, we, we can't force people to come but uh, you know the public engagements are getting uh, more response which is good the um, I've called people uh, when I've heard that they you know they've had issues and and different concerns uh, within the community but when you call them and they don't call you back uh, you, you can't force people to talk to you and I think sometimes people again they, they will uh, make comments behind social media and when you actually do call them to seconds. get a, a, a discussion going, they don't want to have that discussion. But uh, we do do a lot of did you knows on our website. Thank you. Okay, uh, this brings us to end of our questions for our councillor candidates. Each candidate now will provide a one minute closing statement in reverse order from the opening statement. Um, and so we'll start with Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson, the floor is yours. Thank you. I have followed town council since 2019 when I ran in the 2020 by-election. While not an expert, I believe I have an awareness of issues, understanding a council process and the skills to be a contributing member of the team. I will provide a fresh and biased and partial perspective. I have 31 years of accounting and finance experience with an international oil and gas company. I'm an uh, Olds Institute volunteer board member, as well as support the Olds Healthcare Fundraising Committee. Since July, I've been assisting the Olds Chamber of Commerce as they emerge from the pandemic and restructure. The role of councillors becoming increasingly complex. The scope, breadth, and community impact of issues coming before council requires a variety of skills, including analytical, logical reasoning, and sound judgment. The 2020 remuneration review identified preparation time as a core activity of council. If elected, I'll be guided by the following principles. Seek first to understand, then be understood. Trust but verify, and the truth is always in the details. Thank you, and a thank you to all who organized. Thank you. Uh, next is Ms. Watkins, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I had somebody ask me, how am I going to stay 100% Lucinda if I end up on town council? And I thought that was a really good question. Um, I am committed to staying 100% myself and sticking to the values that I strongly believe in. Uh, it might not be fantastic in politics, but it, I think it's what we need. We need a community member who's passionate about our community uh, and cares deeply about these issues. Um, I want to listen. I want to be connected to residents and be the voice of people here in town. I had somebody ask me what big changes I had planned. Uh, my answer is I have no intention of walking in and creating instant drastic change. I don't really think that's how council works. I think if you want to make a huge impact in your community, you start with your neighbor, you start with your friends, and you start with some kindness. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Walsh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. You know, I've been on council in the past and it's, you know, it's no secret what the requirements are and what needs to be done. I think that I would like to be on council again because things have changed and I would go back and, and create, think of better moving forward, if I can use that term. I, I believe that I bring values. I'm not a loud person or uh, overly dominating person, I listen. And I think that's my strongest point is I listen to everyone. And I give it a lot of thought and a lot of research. And what I come up with at the end of the day, I think is usually pretty good reason to thinking. So that's what I feel that my strongest point on council has been in the past and will be in the future. In fact, so I'm looking forward to serving you again. I see a lot of good candidates here. So we're going to be good. Thank you. 
Ms. Ryan, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Stuart. Uh, you know, Olds is a vibrant community with uh, diverse economy, its people, its volunteers, parks, trails, recreation facilities, all of which brought me here. And uh, seeing that potential is what why, why I wanted to help it to um, grow and thrive and why I ran for council the first time and why I'm running again. I'm passionate about this community and how it can grow. When I ran for council four years ago, I said I'd bring a new voice to council with from fresh ideas and I did that. I asked questions, I listened to people and I continue to do that if reelected and contribute new ideas, build on our partnerships and bring your voice to council. I did not grow up here. I offered a different perspective with no hidden agenda. I'm committed, responsive, experienced and transparent. Keep, keep a second. strong voice on council. Vote for uh, to reelect Heather Ryan on October 18th. Ms. Overwater, the floor is yours. Thanks, Stuart. It has been a priv privilege to serve the residents of the town of Olds over the last eight years. I ask for your support to represent you for the next four years. I do not have an agenda. I will not make promises I cannot keep. I am here to be a dedicated counselor for you. What your issues are, are the town of Olds issues. With good communication through public engagements, we can work together to solve them. I will not say that taxes won't increase, but I can tell you we have held taxes to 0% increase over the last two years. I will ask the right questions so that your tax dollars are spent in the most efficient and practical way as possible. Through respectful and thoughtful collaboration with our municipal neighbours, we will thrive as a vibrant, active community, and we will continue to be the envy of our neighbouring communities. I ask you on October 18th, vote Marianne Overwater to be your very strong voice on council. Ms. Adams, the floor is yours. So going forward with the devastation um, the last year and a half has brought, um, you know, how can we develop and achieve realistic capital plans during this economic instability is going to be a focus of mine. And let's rebuild a strong community. It is time to bring back the true meaning of community. And my priority is to support and advocate for those issues important to you. I will be a voice to represent the unheard, a new voice and strong advocate to hold accountability and transparency in the decisions affecting you. It is time we all had a say in the future. And on October 18th, please vote for Janelle Adams. Thank you. Mr. Daly, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stuart. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the organizing committee of the forum, and I've really enjoyed participating in this forum tonight. Um, this is my first attempt at running for public office as a councilman, and I am committed to doing the best to represent the best interest for all citizens as for the town as a whole. I believe with my life and career experiences, I have the knowledge to make accountable decisions and make Oles a better place to live and work. Thank you for everybody's input over the last few weeks uh, through emails and phone calls. And it, it reinforces my three major platform items that I, I'm running on, integrity, transparency, and experience. With integrity, it's, it's making, um, informed decisions and, seconds. and being accountable. Transparency, no hidden agendas, experience, working with people and rebuilding relationships. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Cummings, the floor is yours. Thank you. So leadership has been talked about quite a bit here today and I'll tell you, leadership is, is super important. And over the last 20 years, I've taken a lot of leadership roles in the community volunteer groups that I've been a part of, Navy League of Canada, the, the Horizon School here in Oles and several other opportunities. I was a leader in the Canadian Forces. I was a non-commissioned officer running uh, several programs and leading many men and women into very complicated situations. Uh, Leadership is needed at all times and all levels of government, and that's super important here. I really wanted to answer a lot of the questions that I didn't get a chance to answer here today, so please uh, join my Facebook group, uh, James for Olds Council, uh, where I'm going to try. I've taken lots of notes here today. I'm going to try to put answers to all those questions that you had on there. 
because it's important for all of us here today to listen to what you're exactly. saying and to respond to those uh, those things that you're saying to us. And that's that's super important. So find those answers online on Facebook. And uh, if you have any more, give them a shout. Yep. Ms. Blatz, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, in closing tonight, I really want to take this opportunity to thank all of you, the residents, for your support. I've had an opportunity to meet and connect, connect with many of you, and it's been a great honor and privilege to serve as your counselor. I believe that my experience and background enable me to be an active and accountable counselor, and I will continue to be your voice on council. And I would encourage you to please reach out to me if you have any further questions, comments, or concerns. And I look forward to your vote on October 18th for Wanda Blatz. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you candidates. This brings us to an end of our candidates forum. I would like to thank all 11 candidates for their participation. I would like to again thank our hosts, the Olds and District Chamber of Commerce and Partners Mountain View Publishing, 96.5 CKFM and Olds College. And I would like to give a special shout out to my fellow organizing committee members who helped coordinate the evening uh, for the format as well as the questions. Murray Elliott, Brian Hep, Melanie Hep, and Sean Fox. And a special uh, uh, shout out to Sean Fox from the Town of Olds for handling the technical details of today's forum. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Please ensure that you get out and vote on Monday, October 18th, and have a great evening. Thank you.